All right, guys, welcome back to the Independence Missouri Game Cafe midseason showdown. We are here in Top Cut finally. Uh, top Cut was a top four cut. Um, first game we're going to show for you is um, Leonard Craft the Third, who is the number four seed, versus Jake, who we just saw on sh Jake, who we just saw on stream, uh, beat Ethan Simpson. He is the number one seed, of course, being. The undefeated so it should be an interesting matchup both jake of course having a very good day at 4-0 and then leonard of course is being a tip a historically good player should be a very good matchup uh yeah and jake is fairly new to the the kansas city scene as far as i know uh is that correct Drew? i've never i've never of course i'm not <laughs> in that area anymore right but I don't ever recall seeing him beforehand, so. But I mean, actually, what I've seen him. Displayed. Okay, he he has been he's been to a few of like whenever the Yeti Yeti Gaming in St. Mm -hmm. Louis still had events. He was at a couple of them, but I don't think he's ever been to a KC area one. So, but so I mean, definitely, obviously, uh, he's had a pretty decent showing today. Yeah, Invader, just stealing some local CP. So, hey, good on him. And, and of that's course, not the first time. Yeah. That we've and because this is, coming. yeah. And because, of course, this is top four, everybody gets in this top cut, gets CP, thankfully. Don't have any undefeateds losing in top eight and missing. So he gets to avoid that today, which is also probably a plus for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but of course, we saw him playing that rain team, the heart, mm -hmm. not even just rain, hard rain. Very hard um, rain. Yeah. Double Swift Swim users with Swim Mega Swamper and Solo, mm -hmm. uh, Thunder Coco, and we didn't see the Tornadus in that set, but, right. but it carries Rain Dance. Rain Dance. Yeah, it carries Rain Dance on its own. So, multiple options to make sure that Rain is always up. And it was for... kind of interesting to see the uh, the Mega Scissor and Mega Metagross. Um, I haven't Mega seen a Swamper. whole lot of double Megas in this format. Have you? Uh, it's not, it's not as, like, it's not something that was as popular as it was in 2015. Because, right. like, back then you think, oh, we had, like, all oh, this Charizard, we had, like, what was it, Charizard, Kangaskhan was a double mega core. Mm -hmm. You had, like, you had, um, stuff with Gardevoir and whatnot. It's just something right. that fa has fallen off so much because typically you just want to dedicate another slot to a Pokemon you can bring to more matchups rather than a mega Right. That you and can only bring like with, one specific like thing, boost, right? We've got beast boost that's available. Uh, we've got tapus that are available. So I mean, it there's just so many things that you want to dedicate to different slots that adding a different mega uh, can often be difficult to incorporate into. Yeah, team. and while we haven't seen, like, of course we have it here with Jake's team, and it hasn't been that popular. However, it has actually seen. Uh, we saw Alessio Yuri Bachetto. Uh, win the Sydney Internationals with the Mega, Mega Metagross Mega Tyranitar combo. And that's a combination that's honestly picked up a lot of steam this year. Like, that's the only instance where Double Mega makes, is like really shown through. And it's just be, and it's like, and that's just because Tyranitar on its own is a really good Pokemon still. Like, that's another thing with Double Mega is you don't see the Double Mega because. Typically, a Pokemon needs its Mega Stone to be effective, but when you have something like Tyranitar, like it didn't really need it in that kit. Like you could option without the Mega. So, but jumping into team preview here, uh, teams for you one more time: Leonard with Tapu Koko, Amoongus, Aegislash, Tapu Fini, Salamence, and Incineroar. Uh, Jake running that Tornado, Scizor, Ludicolo, Pelipper, Swampert, and Tapu Koko. So All right, Franklin. Feel about this. Um... I'm like I'm looking at this, and we saw Ethan uh, kind of heavily relying on Tapu Koko to try and deal with rain, and we had a few technical difficulties. But don't think for a second that Drew and I were over here just lollygagging. Drew and I were discussing this, uh, and one of the things that that Drew and I were discussing was that one of the best ways to deal with rain is to prevent the two Pokemon that we that a rain user wants to have on the field from being on the field at the same time. Drew, 
Uh, it sounds like Drew might be stalling up for just a second here. Uh, so one of the things that Drew was really uh, emphasizing was that as a rain user, Pelipper with Hurricane, and we saw Brine as well, uh, associated with that Swampert, having both of those on the field at the same time is just a high amount of damage output. And so Ethan, when he was playing against this rain team, it seemed like he was trying to position himself in a way to prevent having both of those on the field at the same time. And we'll have to see how Leonard does at preventing both Pelipper and Swampert from being able to put out high amounts of damage all at the same time. So, jumping into this, we have Pelipper and Ludicolo. So we've got a nice fake out and rain set up. And on Leonard's side, we've got Salamence and Amoongus. So it is kind of interesting to note that both, both players... Uh, have access to Tapu Koko, so Spore may not be the most effective here. Uh, we saw Ethan using Spore against Pelipper to try and put that to sleep to prevent some of that damage output. Uh, Salamence is in a position where if he were faster than Ludicolo, he'd be able to do a lot of damage with that Aerialate boosted uh, frustration that we saw in earlier rounds. Uh, but Ice Beam is always a threat. Yeah, Ice Beam here... Like, it... Is going to be a big threat because, of course, Salam like of course when you th this is a good lead for like you would think Salamence has got this perfect position where he can just KO mm -hmm. either Pokemon, but mm -hmm. Ludicolo carrying that Ice Beam and of course being a Grass type just going to be able to bypass that Rage Powder and just KO Salamence if it chooses to do so, mm -hmm. and just goes for it right away. But it actually goes after the Amoongus, so wanting to get rid of that threat first before wow, Salamence. I, this is a very brave move from Leonard, but clearing out that Ludicolo in one shot. That yeah, Ludicolo. Such a risk of... Yeah, that was a very gutsy play from Leonard. And a, like a completely different adaptation to how he was passive, trying to focus on his board position, taking what he learned from John and just taking the initiative and going on the offense. And I think and just that's taking a great a, example yeah, that of was a, its adaptability. Yeah, that was a really big KO because Ludi Colo does all the work versus yeah. Leonard's team. What do you got think? You have Tapu Koko, you have Tapu Fini, you have Incineroar, Salamence, mm -hmm. all of which don't like Ludi Colo whatsoever. So I think that's a trade where, yeah, you lost your Amoongus, so you don't have re Salamence, mm -hmm. but you take that trade for an yeah. offensive threat like Ludi Colo. So. And so at this point, um, we have to watch out for Salamence taking Thunder from Tapu Koko. We saw in uh, in a previous match that this Tapu Koko's Thunder was doing a huge amount of damage to Salamence's. Um, and then Aegislash over here, uh, I mean, it can sit here pretty easily in shield mode because it's in the, the it's the slowest Pokemon on the field at the moment, so it shouldn't be taking too much damage but it's still uh -oh. going to be threatened pretty well. It would it would honestly probably take a lot of damage still. This is a top of Coco with Thunder in terrain. Yeah. So that would still be doing a lot of damage, I would assume. But we see the very safe play here from Jake, just going for the Protect Tailwind, wanting to scout out any Leonard, and just getting his speed control for the rest of the game. We actually see that double in the top of Coco. So very good Protect there from Jake. Yeah. And stopping both of those attacks. Crazy. Yeah, and now... Well, if played the defensive this turn, he can go right on the defensive. Tabu Koko is in a prime position to start throwing off Thunders. Amoongus is out of the picture, so no redirection. If uh, Aegislash doesn't well protect... That yeah. Aegislash has to either protect or switch, otherwise it's gone, right? Yeah, Aegislash, if it doesn't... King Shield is going to get killed by Thunder. We saw it KO Salamence and Jake Sutton versus Ethan. Mm -hmm. So, going to be interesting to see who targets here. Salamence protecting... Aegislash following suit. So, going to get that double protect up. And we see that Swampert switch in. So, getting in for free here. Um, so, I mean, going to be able to put down a lot of offensive pressure with that Ice Punch next turn. This on is the also Salamence a good if it opportunity wants to. to mention how some of the, the speed calculations have changed in the current generation of Pokemon. Uh, with Mega Evolution, since the rain is up currently, uh, uh, Swampert, sorry. Swampert should be able to outspeed almost everything, even if it didn't have Tailwind up at the moment. So it's going to get that Swift Swim boost as it Mega Evolves here. Uh, 
Uh, and having access to things like Ice Punch or Rock Slide, uh, that's a huge amount of damage potential here. Yeah, we do see Swampert going to go for that Mega Evolution. Um, so this is a lot of offensive pressure being put down from Jake's side. We see the Waterfall in a... Gonna should be able to 2KO, which it does. And we see that Thunder. So this probably goes into... All right, it goes into Salamence. And we see it hang on, but get the full... We get that Paralysis on it. Oh, no. And the full and the para. para. Paul oh, Chua. So Paul Chua fake out and the Waterfall flinch from oh, man. the Swamper. So now, if you're Jake, you literally could not have asked for a better turn there. You get all that free damage. For we saw that, that forfeit screen come up. Um, I mean, Leonard almost out of options here. Um, so, I mean, at this point, it looks like he needs to come back with a better game plan. Uh, we see that there's one turn of rain out. So it looks like Leonard really wanted to try and stall out rain as much as possible. Uh, we saw previous matches where that Salamence was very bulky, so we can clearly see the difference between training of Salamences between Ethan's and Leonard's over the rounds, but uh, just a really unfortunate roll of the dice there with a Waterfall Flinch and a full para paralysis on Thunder. Of all yeah. things, Thunder Paralysis. Yeah, That's Thunder's got the 30% chance to para, or is it 20? It's higher than Thunderbolt, which is just 10%. Mm. But, like, but that's just one of the benefits there of getting your offensive Pokemon out in, in Tailwind like that, is, like, you're putting all that damage down like that, and you're forcing Leonard to play defensive, and just little things like that are going to pick up. Like, it's bound to happen based on, just because it's RNG. Yeah. Thunder so para, point, or the Waterfall Flinch, like, those are just beat because it's just punishment for playing having to be on the defensive right and at this point now leonard has to make an adjustment uh, we've seen how much damage that jake has been able to put out with the pokemon as long as he's got the pokemon out that he wants uh yeah leonard did prevent uh ludicolo from being able to do too much leonard made that right call but losing amoongus uh i mean is that really what cost him the game? Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe he'll make an adjustment here, switch up some of the Pokemon that he decides to bring. Uh, if I recall correctly, Leonard did not reveal the fourth Pokemon there. He was trying to preserve a little bit of information. Um, and we'll see what kind of adjustments he can make. Yeah, we just see Jake going to stick with what works, that Pelipper Ludicolo. Mm -hmm. I actually see Leonard switching it up for Salamence and Cineroar. So, Incineroar is a Mon that I'm kind of surprised to see here, just because it's rain. It's hard rain. Incineroar is a fire type. Not right. a Pokemon that's happy to be out here, but it is offering that fake out pressure onto Pelipper. So, it's offering, just forcing trades here, more than likely. It's like, okay. It's, it's overall just forces trades for board position. And just adds more mind games into how this turn two is going to play out. Right. And so this kind of ends up being a, a position where if if Jake decides, okay, I want to go for Ice Beam, then Leonard has the opportunity to, to use Fake Out, right? So he can Fake Out that Ludicolo. Or Leonard can prevent Tailwind from going up by Faking Out Pelipper. Uh, and so there's just a, a lot of mobility that this allows Leonard. But he's also playing a, a kind of dangerous mind game here where Hydro Pump from Ludicolo takes out uh, Incineroar potentially. But we see that fake out going to the Pelipper, preventing Tailwind, uh, and then the Ice Beam going into Salamence. So oh, there's that bulky Salamence and hangs on. Wow. And KOs Ludicolo with frustration. We saw wow. it take that. So when we saw it take that Thunder from Ko Tabu Koko, I was curious if it would be able to take that Ice Beam because like kind of similar damage outputs from each of those and just proves that bulk like that Salamence that Leonard is the best the bulk on the Salamence is worth it. Just yeah. being able to take take these attacks that normally it doesn't take. Just I mean, been it's absolutely four times huge. weakness right there. It's yeah. got dragon and flying in there, taking an ice beam with a little bit of HP, but preventing the tailwind. Uh and I mean I able to stay on the board. Uh but now at this point, it almost seems like we're in a similar position to where we were last game, where, yes, he's taken the first KO on Ludicolo, but 
what kind of positioning does he have to find now? Yeah, like, he took one step forward with the KO, but he gets put two steps back right now because this Tabu Koko can easily go for Dazzling Gleam, pick up the KO on Salomon, and do enough chip damage onto Incineroar, or Pelipper should be able to pick it up with either with a Scald, because mm. assuming it outspeeds Incineroar, because we saw in Leonard's earlier set that this is Figgy Berry Incineroar and not the Assault Vest mm -hmm. that others were running today. Right. So, just yeah, you, it's but actually you see Protect there. So once again, playing defensive. Mm -hmm. Just not wanting that, but we actually see Leonard reading into that this game. KOs the Pelipper with frustration. Wow. Leonard is just making really gutsy plays here. I'm really impressed. Uh, and again, this is like Drew and I knowing Leonard's play style. Again, coming back to if you, you've got a couple different bits of information that you're trying to pull from, not only are you trying to read into uh, what Pokemon are on the field and what they can do, but you're also trying to play off of uh, people's natural tendencies in game. Uh, so this is surprising for both Drew and I seeing Leonard play this aggressively. Yeah. Um, thing now is though, Swampert mm -hmm. is the more offensive threat. So you like, <laughs> that's another thing. You just took out one chess piece. Mm -hmm. Like still got two more to go and it's going to be really hard to break through these two when they're, when they're the two fastest things on either team at yeah. this point. And they're going to be throwing out a lot of damage. You see this waterfall gonna easily KO Incineroar and the and then, whatever attack Tabu Koko goes for just KO Salamence. <laughs> yeah whether that's Thunder which is guaranteed to hit in in the rain or a simple Dazzling Gleam uh which I really appreciate Dazzling Gleam here just in case there was some sort of switch uh I mean just making sure that yeah if he switches out Incineroar I've got the ability to damage whatever comes in with a nice rain boosted waterfall as well as getting a little extra chip with that Dazzling Gleam uh, a great decision there from Jake. Uh, so Leonard taking his time a little bit, trying to think through how he wants to finish out this end game. Um, and looking at the your time, Leonard is a little bit ahead. So he's got enough flexibility here to make this decision uh, and not have to worry about it too much later on. And part of yeah. this, um, it could just be trying to think out what his next few turns are <clears throat> because you as the person who's trying to put your Pokemon in have a little bit of extra time because you know what you have but your opponent doesn't know what you have yeah and now seeing the Amoogus at the field this makes KOing the Pelipper like losing your Pelipper like that all the more just kind of heartbreaking for Jake right. because now you have that Rage Powder available, and you gave Tapu Fini rain. Mm -hmm. So, and we saw on Ashton's team that this is a choice specs Tapu Fini, and these are similar, not meaning they could, they, so Tapu Fini could have something else, but what, uh, you, like, typically what we think of ta counter Tapu Fini, it's Tapu Coco, but Amoongus is not going to be letting that happen, and any muddy, muddy water in the rain is going to hurt Tapu, like, that does a lot of damage, and add on choice specs, and that just might seal up the game for Leonard right now. Right. And so we see that Tapu Koko understanding the threat that's going on here. And then Amoogus just trying to protect its partner. And, I mean, we've got Earthquake here to try and do some spread damage, but that's not going to clear out Amoogus here. And so we'll have to see how much damage that does to Tapu Fini and whether that's going to be a, a really viable option. Yeah, not even a two-hit KO on either poke. So oh. Muddy Water does connect this time <laughs> oh, we'll so see much better going to be able to accuracy drop that actually yeah. does no, that really didn't do a lot of damage to swampers so probably signifying that this is not choice bex based mm -hmm. off that damage so probably looking at a 50% berry here for just a really bulky swampert but i mm -hmm. still think if it was specs it would have done more and we but, still have the rain up um this might be the last turn of rain we'll have to wait for the ticker to kind of creep through a little bit longer um but, I mean, still, Amoongus has a decent amount of health, and I believe that we've seen the 50% pinch berry on this Amoongus before. And, I mean, that's just... It's going to be tough for Jake to clear out both sides. Uh, Tapu Fini going to go ahead and protect, stall out the rain just a little bit longer, which might be unfortunate, but protecting from that waterfall, really nice. Yeah, getting that... Getting calling both of those attacks is absolutely huge, and Sludge Bomb 
KOs Tapu Koko. Wow. So that what? is a... I'll, I'm like... I have to say, that never happens. So that's like <laughs> kind of hinting at something for how this Among Us is trained. Right. So probably has a little bit more special attack investment than most. Because just KOing Tapu Koko is really something that we just don't see from Among yeah. Us. And Jake obviously recognizing that Tapu Fini was a huge threat, but not necessarily recognizing that Amoongus would be such a threat. Uh, and I mean, it's just seeing Leonard make these decisions regularly in these matches has been fantastic because you've seen uh, Amoongus up against a Swampert, which often has like Ice Punch, which can do a huge amount of damage against uh, Amoongus. And Leonard's just like, no. I'm going to let you try and do what you can. But <laughs> there's that pinch berry on, on Tapu Fini, and more sludge bombs coming out of Amoongus, and no poison, so Swampert lives to see another turn. Yeah, well, Misty Terrain is up. but oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, interesting that we don't see the 50% berry Amoongus here. Mm -hmm. So signifying that it's something else. Uh, I'm not honestly sure what it could be. We've seen some Akaberry Amoongus. We've seen... The Pyapa Bear, which right. is a psychic reducing one, so it'll be interesting to see what that actually holds and if it comes into play here. But we see that Moonblast is KO Swampert, and a Leonard could really good comeback there to take game two. Yeah, so now the pressure is on Jake's side. Uh, he knows that, okay, I thought game one was kind of in my court. I thought that if Leonard was going to play that risky, I was going to be able to take advantage of it, and Leonard's like, no. Uh, I survived this Ice Beam, and I know it. So now we've got the pressure on Jake's side to try and change things up, because Jake was confident that if Leonard decides that he's going to go with the same leadouts, I've still got the answer. I always had the answer. Um, and now Jake, again on the back foot. And we've seen previously uh, in the matches against Ethan that when he wanted to change things up, maybe Mega Scissor comes out? Maybe? I. I don't. I really don't think Mega Scizor is going to come here. Unfortunately, you have absolutely everything on Leonard's team. Like Leonard wants Mega Scizor to come to this matchup. Like you have Tapu Koko, Incineroar, Aegislash, Mega Salamence, and Tapu Fini, yeah. all of which have no problem playing Scizor. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to see that. Um, I honestly think we're just going to see a lot of the same that we've been seeing. I like. Pelipper, like Pelipper Ludicolo, yeah, Ludicolo hasn't done anything, but mm -hmm. it's getting Jake set up to a point for Swampert to start sweeping the games, and that's where right. he needs to start focusing on. And and if the adaptation I want to see from him this game is protect your Pelipper, because you saw right. how much work the Amoongus did. And now, because right. like, what we were talking about earlier was that it was the defensive issue, mm -hmm. or it's rage powdering away everything, and you can't damage through it. Now right. you gotta worry about it KOing your secondary sweeper with Tabu Coco, because we saw that Sludge Bomb do so much damage right. in that last game. So now you have to respect it both as an offensive and defensive threat. Just like we've been talking about mind games, that adds on to more of it. And it's just gonna be really interesting to see how Jake switches it up. And we see the same leads coming out from him, unsurprisingly. Mm -hmm. So gotta be expecting some adaptation here, if I had yeah. to guess. Yeah, so maybe being more selective about which fakeouts uh, and where they go. Because a, a fakeout plus uh, an Ice Beam might be able to take out this Salamence. Uh, and so now Leonard has to be aware of his opponent's ability to adjust things. Yeah, however, so, like we talk about that with the Salamence. Like you have, we were talking about this earlier, the Salamence are like, oh, I got to deal with the Sweeper. Mm -hmm. This Tabu Fini we saw was a berry, could right. easily just start calm minding all over this lead. Yeah. So you have to, this is a really, like, I'm not going to say risky area for Jake, but mm -hmm. picking the wrong Mon here to target down could just be very bad. And we see that fake out, come on, I want a Salamence. That oh, fake out does man. not do it, that doesn't do enough chip for Ice Beam to KO, because we saw it I hang out with 25 so. HP last time. Right. Tabu Fini, yeah, does just Calm Mind here. So, so that's now you have the issue of, yeah. So now... Leonard taking advantage of the offensive pressure Salamence puts on to mm -hmm. start setting up with Tapu Fini, adding on to its offensive pressure. So this is a really tough spot for Jake. Yeah, you can KO Salamence right now, but this Tapu Fini, like, just 
you can ignore this type of Fini. It can just keep boosting up if it wants to. Right. And, and on the honestly, and on the other hand, Nicolo, he's a special attacker, right? So yeah. even if you go for Giga Drain, which could be super effective, there's no way you're getting through that. Mm -hmm. So um, this type of Fini is honestly just putting on so much pressure. Moonblast is going to do a lot of damage to everything. I know we saw Ludicolo with Assault Vest in the last set, so it might take a little bit more work to KO that Pokemon. Right. But we'll have to wait and see. Solomon's, of course, protecting. We're going to stall out this tail, and we do see the Giga Drain. Very good call from Jake. Does a lot of damage, a lot more than I was expecting there. And we see that double up into Tapu Fini. What a great call from Jake. He's really aware of the situation, and I think that he's reading into uh, where Leonard's brain is at. Uh, and I really respect that adaptation from Jake. Uh, we saw that in game one, he was expecting Leonard to play a lot more defensively, a lot slower, play more to what he's used to seeing from Leonard. Uh, and then game two, kind of making adjustments and calling Leonard's bluff and getting kind of kind of hit for it. But then here, uh, we see Leonard kind of going back to a little bit more of a defensive play style, and, and Jake is capitalizing on it. Yeah, so... This is a still this is a really tough spot for Leonard now because mm -hmm. Ice Beam, it's it's a situation where it's called a double up because right. if I, so because of course Ice Beam Hurricane KO Solomon's we see Aegis Slash switch in which is a very good it's in a good spot right here because of this Ice Beam coming out so very yeah. good call from Leonard taking this of course no freeze potential as well misty terrain and we see a Hurricane mm -hmm, Hurricane so letting wow. Tapu Fini get off a free free Moonblast, and so. so that's going straight into Pelipper, uh, and so that should proc the Sash, and there we go. Uh, but, I mean, that's still pretty good damage. And Ludicolo with the Assault Vest, if if Leonard decides to go for a Muddy Water, that's not going to do too much damage to Ludicolo, but you always have that capability of dropping some accuracy here. Mm -hmm. And what you gotta note is, this rain is about to run out soon. And, and Tailwind's up too. Like, we yeah, got so, one turn of Tailwind, one turn of, uh, of Rain left? Oh no, Drew, did we lose you? I love you, Drew. So we've got Ludicolo here, still sitting pretty at full health, uh, with Rain about to evaporate, with Tailwind about to end. Um, if Leonard can deal with this Pelipper, he's going to control basically the limitation on weather, he's going to control the speed, uh, and seeing that this is a hard Rain team, this Pelipper absolutely has to keep itself around. So we see that Protect following suit there. Giga Drain coming out and not doing quite enough. So we're going to see that Pinch Berry activate. And then we're going to have Tapu Fini back up above 50%, albeit barely, but going here and capable of getting this muddy water. Pelipper protecting itself. Not going to go anywhere here. But Leonard has access to this Z Shadow Ball from Aegis Slash which we see coming right out, and this is likely going into the Ludicolo, which, as we've mentioned, is Assault Vest. I could actually see this going into Pelipper, though, because be if Leonard calls this, because if it because it covers options, right? If Pelipper mm -hmm. doesn't protect, Muddy Water KOs it, and you Ludicolo. If it does protect like it just did, then he would KO through his Sash, but that's not the case. Uh, Leonard identifying that he wants Ludicolo gone as soon as possible. Is taking the opportunity to fire off a Z move there it does a lot of damage. So Moonblast yeah. will be able to pick up that KO, and even another Shadow Ball, Aegis Slash will. I mean, that's still really incredible. That was a, yeah. a huge amount of damage because again, we've seen that this is Assault Vest and Ludicolo just not taking that Z Shadow Ball. So we've got one more turn of Rain left. Uh, so this is the last turn, which means that Tapu Fini is going to be able to capitalize on that little bit of Rain boost, uh, and then Jake actually playing pretty smart protecting that Pelipper so that when Rain runs out, he can switch it back out and back in to kind of keep Rain up for another set of five turns. Yeah, the game. and interesting note here is Muddy Water was very close to KOing Ludicolo from that range. Like, I think it did something similar. Mm -hmm. And Jake has shown this, like, I'm going to target down your Tapu Fini at all costs. Right. And So, so I would be interesting to see if Aegis Slash takes it out and just set up substitute knowing that he's been targeting down this Feeny this entire game but all right we see Moonblast come out from top of Feeny onto Swampert oh into Swampert kind of does a, a lot of there. damage that's pretty great that's we a do good just see Shadow Ball just gonna KO 
does KO yeah. Ludicolo. So getting rid of that. And that was a good, like, okay. You don't like your Swampert taking that damage at all. Right. <laughs> but it's a good switch out from the perspective of, all right, Rain's up this turn. Yes, I'm going to be taking damage with Swampert. But now I get to reset my Rain and I have a full five turns of abusing it. Right. And then and again, the going back to how Mega Speeds are calculated in this generation, uh, if he goes for the Mega here, he's got the Swift Swim boost. Uh, and then... Earthquake is not a, a physical, it doesn't make contact with Aegislash, so he can freely go for Earthquake here uh, and not have to risk King Shield dropping his attack stat by two stages. Yeah, this is what I, this is what I'm going to, if I was in Jake's shoes here, this is a very safe Earthquake Tailwind, in my mm -hmm. opinion. You have Earthquake yeah. picking, you know the Aegislash doesn't have wide guard. Well, if you've paid attention, if he got any information on the team, you know the Aegislash is substitute and no wide so there's a free Earth for it. Right. And Tailwind sets you up for the later game. And we see Tapu Fini getting rid of its two boosts, knowing that it's in danger, gets the Salamence out on the field. Mm -hmm. point, so going to have more offensive pressure there for the next turn. And just preserving that for potential just sacking, just to burn a turn of Tailwind, just sacrifice Tapu Fini in that regard. We see Aegislash does King Shield, not wanting to get hit by this Earthquake or Waterfall. So, interesting to see, if Jake called this, that would be huge, but no, just opts for the safe play with that Earthquake. Gonna do and no damage here. for that, that Earthquake is... Uh, we actually see really Hurricane oh, wow. come out. That's, that is fantastic. Uh, calling that switch there, and again, uh, Drew and I expecting that really safe Tailwind to set yourself up for the next turn, but Hurricane doing a huge amount of damage. So now you're in a position where Salamence is <laughs> under half, right? So yeah. your Salamence is under threat of, of basically anything. And that puts Leonard in a position where he has to make choices. And nobody really wants to be in a position where if I make the wrong decision, I could lose, right? Yeah. So I, this turn is going to be very important, I feel, mm. because it's more mind games of... Who do I target? Is my opponent going to protect? Right. And there's so many scenarios we can see play this turn. Swamp is just going to go ahead and go for that protect, try and keep himself around. Uh, and Salamence going for the frustration into the Swampert. And Pelipper going for Brine, targeting that Salamence. We've got the rain up, but it doesn't quite pick up the KO. Yeah, really interesting that that's a Brine there, just mm -hmm. throwing that into a resisted. Throwing into a dragon type that just resists that attack. Right. Instead of Even a hurricane. Brian has that boosted damage because Salamence was under half. Uh, we saw that Hurricane did just a little bit over half. So Jake slightly miscalculating, maybe, but understanding that he's got Tapu Koko in the back. Uh, so maybe he's just really confident here because he still has uh, Swampert out that's faster than almost anything. Uh, and then really doubtful that Aegislash staying in sword mode is going to take a, a, a thunder in electric terrain. Yeah, so what I actually, thinking of it now, I actually kind of like the brine, yeah. as weird as it sounds, <laughs> because, like, you're accepting that, okay, I don't need my power for this turn. I've gotten my rain up. Right. It has done its job. I want, because what we've seen, what has won in the game, it has been this Tapu Koko Swampert. So knowing, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not going to kill the Salamence. I'll right. let it KO me just for a better board position. And it's paying off here because we see this waterfall in the top of yeah. falling for that King Shield. Tabu Koko not going to be able to do anything with that Thunder this turn, but can easily just Dazzling Gleam or Thunder the next turn into the Age of Slash. And if he goes out into Age of Slash, just burn his King Shield. Mm -hmm. so, so we can just see a Protect from Tabu Koko and Earthquake mm -hmm. and just really restricting the number of options Leonard has. And we do see Amoogus come out here, which will still pin Jake back a little bit here. Uh, we've seen that this Amoogus is going to be able to do heavy amounts of damage the... to Tapu Koko. Amoogus might be able to win this game on its own. We saw it can <laughs> one-hit KO Tapu Koko with Sludge Bomb. Right. So, and maybe it takes a few damage rolls to KO that Swamper, but, like... Um, like we talked about once again, the offensive pressure of Amoongus was something that was so 
we weren't expecting and is coming into play once again. Swampert actually the one protecting here. So scouting for the Amoongus protect. Aegislash, double King Shield. That double King Shield. He got it. And then Thunder and here going into, into the Amoongus. Amoongus. Is he going for the Paul Chua fake out? Two he can't. It's misty, ter misty terrain. <laughs> Sludge Bomb. Uh, KO. No. Uh, Does not, not KO this time. Uh, man. Interesting protect from that Swampert, though. Probably scouting right. out for the Amoongus protect, more than likely. But this is a real, like, the mind games are still here with who's protecting and all that. This right. Amoongus is just putting on... Just... And Aegislash, with its hefty defenses in shield mode, uh, I'm not confident that you'd be able to pick up a, a KO with Earthquake um, on the Aegislash. So, I mean, even even if you call the Rage Powder, it's going to be really tough for Jake here. His Pokemon are at such low HP. Hey, Amoongus goes for that Protect. And that oh, he gets right one of protect. them. Oh man! Oh, thunder. Oh, so he calls it with, the, gets the thunder call right. I don't know if this is gonna KO without a train. Aegislash hangs on, no Bad. para because of the Missy train, and we'll get it clean KO with Shadow Ball here. And of course, opting to take out Tapu Koko. Yeah. Just saving, just clearing that threat out for Salamence, and now Salamence is in the back. Rain is gone. Swampert has no longer got that Swift Swim, and that Salamence can just come in and KO Swampert. But Swampert is going to have a tough time breaking through these two Pokemon on the field in the first place. Right. So it looks I mean, like Leonard that was just made so, some pretty good adjustments. That was such a good. That was such a well played end game by Leonard. Right. Like it looked like we saw that he was in a really rough spot because. Mm -hmm. And it all started with the play that we thought was a bad play. Like, we're like, why do you go for Brine? But that Brine, as weird as it seemed, it put Jake in that spot for the sweep. But And even though that sweeping position looked really bad for Leonard, he was still just able to find a way out through this Amoongus. And just honestly so well executed there. That Amoongus has been a lifesaver. Um, and, you know, it'd be interesting to see... Uh, these two players play, even if it was like a best of five or a best of seven, how things would play out. But I mean, just seeing the amount of adjustments that these players have made in their play style, because they basically brought the same four each game and each game turned out so differently that just adjusting their play style was. So we saw a completely, well, we saw the games go completely differently each time mm -hmm. and they all could have swung each and like something I want to make note of. Like, we were talking about the game one forfeit and not revealing the f which yeah. was more than likely Amoongus. Yeah. And we saw how big the information on Amoongus played into game two. Like, hiding the Sludge Bomb and ca having the potential to KO the Tapu Koko from high amounts of HP yeah. just played, so played out to be so critical for the end games. But here's cool. the thing. We talked about Amoongus. Yeah. Did it ever actually click Rage Powder? I think it might have gone for it once. Yeah, no, it was very offensive heavy. Yeah, uh, from it went what we for saw. it went for the rage <laughs> powder. <laughs> yeah, it went for rage powder once, and the top of Coco protected and didn't even thunder. Yeah, and oh, just that's... like the very like just how that Amoongus varied in playstyle just proved of how Amoongus has been the bane of rain, the bane of rain, <laughs> for every season that it's legal. Yeah, so, and just seeing how versatile this Amoongus has been throughout the entire tournament for Leonard. Uh, Amoongus has been kind of a, a check to some of the Trick Room stuff that he saw against John, um, and then now seeing it as a check to some of the, the Rain team. Like, it's been phenomenal to see it so utilitarian. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, well utilized. Just, yeah, it's just honestly, Amon... It, it, He's just showcasing why Amoongus is always in the top tier of Pokemon. Oh. It's just so versatile and whatnot. So. And then again, I'm pretty sure Leonard the, muted some us. Some of the so. mind games that we've talked about throughout this entire tournament, um, knowing that there's a chance for Rage Powder, and Leonard kind of playing into that and saying, "Okay, I know 
that I have the chance to Rage Powder here. You know I have the chance to Rage Powder here, but I'm going to call you on it. And then just going offensive instead. Uh, I mean, it's just been... It's been a masterclass in mind games today. Yeah, so I'm going to be really, really excited to see how he's going to play this in the finals. We've seen him vary his place. To, like, we've seen him vary how he's played too. Mm -hmm. So just looking forward to that. We're going to take a quick break here and get our second top four matched up, uh, which is a replay between John Mask and Ethan Simpson. So stay tuned. <laughs> 